please. Are my ghastly guests ready for a tale of chilling romance? Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, lest you miss out on more terrifying tales. Now, let's embark on a journey where love and horror intertwine in Valentine's Day at the Overlook. The snow crunched underfoot as Sarah Jennings led her group through the winding forest path, their breaths visible in the crisp winter air. The Overlook Hotel, with its imposing structure, loomed ahead, its windows like blank, staring eyes. Sarah, a seasoned travel blogger known for her daring exploits, felt an unusual twinge of apprehension as she approached. The group behind her, a diverse mix of thrill-seekers and paranormal enthusiasts, chatted excitedly, unaware of the tales of horror that clung to the hotel's walls. You know, they say this place is most active on Valentine's. Jake, a burly man with a deep interest in the paranormal, remarked to the group, his voice tinged with both awe and fear. As they stepped into the lobby, they were greeted by an air of faded grandeur. The chandeliers, though dusty, still spoke of a time when the overlook was the epitome of luxury. The once elegant furniture was now worn, the rich fabrics faded, each piece whispering secrets of its past. Sarah, standing at the reception desk, signed the guest book, her hand momentarily pausing as she realized they were the only guests. Feels like stepping into history, doesn't it? Maria, a young woman in her late twenties, whispered to Sarah, her eyes scanning the ornate lobby. Sarah nodded, trying to shake off the eerie feeling that they were being watched. The group dispersed, some exploring the old photographs on the walls, others testing the antique furniture, their laughter and chatter echoing in the vast space. As Sarah guided them to their rooms, she recounted the hotel's dark history. Tales of madness, murder, and unexplained phenomena that had occurred within these walls, particularly on Valentine's Day, added a chilling thrill to their adventure. Tonight, we explore every corner of this place, Sarah announced, trying to inject confidence into her voice. Who knows what we'll find? The group settled into their rooms, the excitement palpable. Sarah's room, with its view of the snow-covered mountains, felt both cozy and unsettling. She unpacked her equipment, cameras, voice recorders, and an EMF meter, her professional facade masking her growing unease. Dinner was a lively affair, the group sharing stories of previous adventures and speculating about what they might encounter. The hotel staff, a small team of locals, served them with polite smiles, their eyes betraying a hint of wariness. As night fell, the hotel transformed, the shadows seemed to deepen and the silence grew heavier. Sarah couldn't help but feel that the Overlook was a living entity, its walls holding memories of its tormented past. All right, everyone, Sarah called out, her voice steady. Let's begin our exploration. Remember, stick together and keep your cameras rolling. The group, armed with their equipment, followed Sarah into the heart of the Overlook. The adventure was about to begin but little did they know that the hotel had its own plans for them. The line between the living and the dead, on this particular Valentine's Day, was about to become perilously thin. As the cloak of night descended upon the Overlook Hotel, an eerie stillness settled over its ancient halls. The group, led by Sarah Jennings, began their nocturnal exploration, their footsteps echoing through the corridors. The hotel, with its baroque architecture and tattered opulence, felt like a character from a bygone era, its stories etched into the peeling wallpaper and creaking floorboards. Sarah, her professional demeanor intact but her heart racing, led the group with a handheld camera, its light casting long, dancing shadows. Jake, always the enthusiast, had his EMF meter at the ready while Maria clutched her voice recorder, her eyes wide with a mix of fear and excitement. As they ventured deeper, the hotel's oppressive energy seemed to grow. Cold drafts whispered through closed rooms and distant inexplicable sounds, a faint piano melody, a soft giggle, drifted through the air, 
The group shared nervous glances, their initial bravado ebbing away. It's like the hotel knows we're here, Jake murmured, his usual confidence waning. Sarah's own fears began to surface, not of ghosts or ghouls, but of her own past. Images of her failed relationship, a love lost, and the ensuing heartache played in her mind like a haunting melody. She wondered if the hotel was indeed prying into their deepest fears. Stay focused, everyone, she urged, her voice a beacon in the encroaching darkness. They reached the hotel's grand ballroom, its once magnificent splendor now faded. The chandeliers, covered in cobwebs, cast eerie shadows on the walls. As they explored, the air grew colder, and the sense of being watched intensified. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed through the ballroom, causing the group to jump. A door at the far end of the room had slammed shut with no apparent cause. Sarah's heart skipped a beat but she steadied herself, reminding the group to keep recording. This is what we came for, she said, though her voice trembled slightly. The group pressed on, each room revealing more of the Overlook's grim past. In one room, they found old Valentines, their messages of love now haunting reminders of the hotel's tragic history. In another, the mirror seemed to flicker with ghostly images, causing Maria to gasp and step back. It's like the hotel is alive, she whispered, her voice a mix of fear and fascination. As the night progressed, their experiences grew more intense. Personalized visions tormented them, playing on their deepest fears and darkest secrets. Jake saw shadows that moved with purpose, reaching out to him with cold spectral fingers. Maria heard whispers, calling her name, drawing her into the loneliness that she had long buried. Sarah, fighting her own demons, realized the true nature of the Overlook. It wasn't just haunted, it was a mirror, reflecting their inner turmoil. Her own vision came in the form of a spectral figure, an embodiment of her lost love, reaching out to her with a sadness that mirrored her own. We need to understand what's happening, Sarah said, her voice barely above a whisper. The hotel is feeding off our emotions. The group, now visibly shaken, gathered around Sarah. The realization that they were facing more than just ghosts, that they were confronting the very essence of their fears, weighed heavily upon them. Let's keep moving, Sarah decided, her resolve returning. We have to find the heart of this place. The group, holding on to each other, both literally and metaphorically, continued their journey through the Overlook. Little did they know, their true test lay ahead in the depths of the hotel's darkest secrets. The Overlook Hotel, under the veil of night, revealed its true self. The group, led by Sarah Jennings, continued their descent into the hotel's enigmatic core. The air was thick with the scent of old wood and whispered secrets. Each step they took seemed to echo not just in the halls, but in the depths of their souls. Sarah, her camera's light cutting through the darkness, led the group deeper into the hotel. The walls were adorned with faded tapestries, each depicting scenes that seemed unnervingly alive in the dim light. The group's chatter had dwindled to hushed tones, their earlier excitement replaced by a palpable sense of dread. As they ventured through the labyrinthine corridors, the hotel seemed to pulsate with a life of its own. Doors creaked open as they approached, only to slam shut behind them as if the hotel itself was directing their path. The temperature dropped with each step, their breaths now visible in the icy air. Can you feel that? Jake whispered, his EMF meter spiking erratically. It's like the hotel is breathing. In a grand, dilapidated ballroom, the group encountered their most harrowing experience yet. The air shimmered with a spectral light, and for a moment, they could hear the faint sound of music and laughter, as if a ghostly party was still in full swing. Sarah's heart raced. This was more than just a haunting. It was a window into the past. 
The group pressed on, drawn inexorably to the heart of the Overlook. They found themselves in front of an ornate door, its wood carved with strange, unsettling symbols. Sarah reached out to open it, her hand trembling. As the door creaked open, a wave of oppressive energy washed over them. Inside, they found the room where the most gruesome event in the Overlook's history had taken place. The walls were lined with ancient, peeling wallpaper, and in the center stood a grand but ominously stained table. The atmosphere was suffocating, the air charged with a malevolent presence. It's here, Sarah breathed, the heart of the Overlook. In this room, the group's experiences intensified. Personalized visions assaulted them, each more terrifying than the last. Jake saw his own reflection in a broken mirror, but it was twisted, showing him a version of himself he never wanted to face. Maria, cornered by the whispering shadows, confronted the loneliness she had long denied. Sarah's own vision was the most poignant. She saw herself, but not as she was now. In this vision, she was with her lost love, reliving the moments of their relationship, both the joy and the pain. Tears streamed down her face as she faced the ghost of her past, a specter of what might have been. As they struggled with their visions, a ghostly figure emerged from the shadows. It was the former lady of the house, her eyes hollow with eternal sorrow. She spoke in a voice that was both a whisper and a scream, revealing the truth of the Overlook. This hotel, she intoned, feeds on the emotional energy of its guests. It thrives on the intensity of love and fear. You must confront your inner demons or be consumed by them. The revelation hit them like a physical blow. The Overlook was not just a haunted place. It was a sentient being feeding off their fears and memories. We have to break its hold. Sarah said, her voice firm despite her fear. We need to face our fears, accept them. The group, now understanding the true nature of their tormentor, faced their visions with newfound resolve. They confronted their fears, not just as a means of escape, but as a path to healing. Sarah, facing the ghost of her past, spoke words she had never dared to say aloud. I loved you, but I must let you go. I cannot live in the past. With each confession, the oppressive energy of the hotel waned, the visions faded, and the air grew lighter. The group, though emotionally exhausted, felt a sense of liberation. As they made their way out of the heart of the hotel, a new day was dawning outside. They had survived the night, but more importantly, they had faced the darkness within themselves. As dawn's first light broke over the horizon, it cast a soft glow on the Overlook Hotel, transforming its menacing silhouette into a structure of weary antiquity. The group, led by Sarah Jennings, emerged from the hotel's embrace, their expressions a mix of relief and profound introspection. Sarah, her eyes reflecting the night's ordeal, looked at her companions. They had entered as thrill-seekers, hungry for ghostly encounters, but emerged wiser, touched by the depths of their own psyches. The hotel, with its malevolent presence, had forced them to confront their deepest fears and regrets, binning them in an unexpected journey of self-discovery. As they walked away from the Overlook, the hotel receding into the backdrop of the waking world, Sarah felt a cathartic release. The experience had reshaped her understanding of fear and the importance of facing one's past. The Overlook, with all its spectral inhabitants and tragic history, had been a harsh but necessary teacher. Goodbye, Overlook, she whispered, a sense of closure enveloping her. The lessons learned within its walls would resonate with her in all her future endeavors, a reminder that sometimes the greatest hauntings are those within ourselves. Well, boils and ghouls, wasn't that a heart-stopping adventure? If this story chilled you to the bone or warmed your ghostly heart, leave a comment below sharing your most haunting Valentine's Day experience.
Fright fans, click next for more chills and hit subscribe to join our ghastly gang. You see, who dares to miss out, so watch our next video.